Hi, I'm Adam West at the HR Summit and Expo out in Dubai, and I'm joined today with Julian Birkinshaw, professor of the London Business School. So Julian, I'd just like to get started. How would you summarize the impact of technology in the workplace? So technology has always influenced the workplace. From the early days of the computer revolution, the workplace has been reinvented many times. And what is happening today is we've moved, we've moved beyond basic computer automation. We've moved beyond just having mobile phones to allow us to work anywhere. What we're now starting to see is artificial intelligence technology taking away big chunks of what we used to think of as the work that was pr the initial preserve of human beings. And mm -hmm. that artificial intelligence is going to have profound impact on the way that we work in the future. Perfect. And what is the most exciting technology to watch that you think will have an impact on work that's being done? So there are many, but let me pick up on one, which is speech recognition software. So this is, I mean, we've all used this now. We actually speak into our mobile phone or into the app on our kitchen table, and we basically tell the computer what we want to do. And, and that's affecting our day-to-day -day lives. We can order you know, food and we can watch movies without touching the screen or touching our keypad. But if you think about it, it's going to completely get rid of the need to type anything. You know, we as, you know, born in our particular generation, we got used to learning how to type and how to put everything down on, into a system through a keyboard, and that will no longer be needed. Everything can be done through voice. And if you start thinking through the consequences of that, they are really very profound indeed. Mm. Um, and then just touch on that, I know you mentioned AI before. Yeah. Um, in terms of HR, how do you think, so I've seen the rise of chatbots Indeed. And that sort of AI right. is, will, do you think that will be right. yeah. affecting yeah. the HR industry? So chatbots, as I think everybody now knows, are a thing you interface with through your computer is actually a machine, not a human being. And what those chatbots are doing is they are automating a lot of the most routine parts of many people's jobs. So a lot of traditional call center work is being automated. And for the HR profession, that is huge, because what it means is that a lot of the traditional job categories we had, we had people doing jobs which were a mix of actually kind of judgment-based stuff, but also a lot of really boring routine work yeah. that no one wanted to do in the first place. And artificial intelligence allows us to essentially take that bottom slice away, and it allows everybody to do the more interesting work. And what that means is that we've got to redefine job descriptions for people. We've got to think about hiring people differently because we are now hiring people for the more value added stuff. Because we know that increasingly the really basic stuff can be handled by computers. Mm. So again, human resources is having to get to grips with the redefinition of jobs and the re kind of classification of the different types of work that get done in big organizations. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so then from that, how would you summarize sort of the state of the HR industry at the moment? Yeah. So the, the human resource industry has, has often worried a little bit about how can they best be impactful in a changing world. And, and that has always been the case, and it is at least as much the case today. The, the notion of HR people as business partners to people running businesses mm -hmm. is a good one. In many cases, we see them playing a more strategic role than they used to in the past. But the next level or the next series of changes around automation changing jobs is going to cause them to have to think once more again about what their role is because you know, they see themselves as getting the best out of people in the workplace. And as computer technology is doing more of the stuff that people used to do, it means that their job is even tougher because it's about really trying to think about the sense of purpose of people, the sense of identity of people, the sense that people are not doing jobs just for money, but they're actually doing jobs because those jobs are intrinsically interesting and valuable. So that's the, the sort of the sea change that is underway at the moment for human resource professionals. Right, right. And so who or what are the new businesses or new exciting businesses, sorry, that you're seeing emerging, um, you know, in this space yeah. and, and why? 
So it is customary to sort of think about the, the tech companies, mm -hmm. the Apples, the Amazons, and the Googles in such a situation. And, it, and it's actually true in this case, because when you look at which companies are spending the most money and pushing the technology the furthest, it is absolutely mm -hmm. the big Silicon Valley companies and a couple of big companies in China like Alibaba mm -hmm. and Tencent. And let me just give you one example of what I mean. You know, Amazon has now put this little device on our kitchen table. Mm -hmm. I say order more dog food. Dog food arrives 24 hours later, almost no human intervention mm -hmm. at all. You know, it used to be many, many steps, many people involved in that transaction. And now it is a completely seamless thing, not even all done by Amazon. It's a lot of it's done by third parties. And that efficiency improvement is having a dramatic effect on how people live their lives. Right? So they're always looking at it from the point of view of what can we do to make the customer's life easier so that the products they want arrive in their homes almost instantaneously. But the knock-on effect in terms of how many, many sectors of the economy work is absolutely huge. So the, it is the Silicon Valley giants who are throwing money at technology and causing us to actually rethink a lot of the fundamentals of how we do work. Mm -hmm. So then the next question, so leaders, are not just business leaders, but leaders in general, what do you see the biggest challenges facing them? So leaders used to be able to get things done through what we might call command and control. They used to be the exclusive, shall we say, holders of the strategy. They used to be the people who knew what needed to be done and they could parcel out work to everybody else because they had control of money and information. Increasingly now, information is a commodity. Everybody's got access to more or less the same information. People are free, much freer than they used to be to choose whatever jobs they want to do. And so the role of leadership is much less now about trying to monitor and control things. And it's much more about trying to get the best out of people, liberate people. In the business case, that is what we've just been talking about. But there's even a story about political leadership going on here because you know, most countries in the world today, people are not listening to their political leaders in the same way that they used to. They have their own points of view. They are challenging authority in the ways that they used to not to do. And that's causing this, some of this fragmentation we see in the, in, the, in the political sphere today with people going in very different directions, often very polar views about how they want society to work. Mm -hmm. So leadership in a nutshell is getting more difficult and it requires much more soft skills to influence people and much less reliance on power and authority. Perfect. And then my final question to you, Julian, would be, when the conference comes back this time next year, what do you think will be different? You know, what will be the same? Yeah. You know, what do you think will take you by surprise? Yeah. yeah. So every year there's a slightly different theme. There's a slightly different sort of concept or issue that people are talking about. Right now, there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, two years ago, we were talking a lot about big data. So there's, there's going to be some topic that people are talking about. but, but. I think the biggest change between now and next year is that the political landscape that we're living in is in the throes of change. And we are going to see that find its way through into the business world in, in, in important ways. I can't predict whether the kind of the, the Trump Brexit sort of movement is going to gather more steam mm -hmm. or whether there will be a backlash against it. But he, my point is that that debate about essentially libertarian values versus more authoritarian values, mm -hmm. that debate will find its way back into a conference such as this. So the business world doesn't move that quickly, but it is always colored mm -hmm. by the debates that are happening in society and in politics. Well, brilliant. Julian? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Thanks.